Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Sal Stefano, and today joining me is my very good friend, Mike Matthews. Uh, what's up, brother? Good Sorry. to see you. Yeah, you too. That was a long hold there. Yeah. A little weird. Yeah. Uh, he like is an uh, author of some very popular um, fitness uh, books. Um, there's Muscle for Life. Mm, you guys probably know not, him. That one has not been written yet. Really? Yeah, well, that was that was the one that I was that I was just shopping around. So the ones that are out, bigger, leaner, stronger. There you go. Thinner, leaner, that's for men. Thinner, leaner, stronger for women. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I messed it up. Even though yeah. we're good friends. I don't no, but most of that's why the most of life, that's, that's a perspective book. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and recently you just released one on uh, fitness motivation. Right. Uh, the title of the book was it Little, uh, Little Black Book of Fitness Motivation. Workout Motivation. Workout Motivation. Now this, yeah. is a, this is a big one because um, probably one of the most common questions I get from people, you know, aside from like, how do I lose weight? What's the yeah. best way to whatever? Mechanical questions. Yeah. It's, it's always, uh, you know, how do I stay motivated? And I think in the fitness space, I mean, I trained people for 20 years. That was the key. If I could find a way to get somebody to find meaning and purpose in training and in eating right, yep. uh, I will succeed. Yep. If I don't do that, I don't care what the strategy was. I don't care what the diet was, the workout it would fail. And the dropout rate uh, with fitness is, is tremendous. Yep. I think most people have worked out and most people have stopped working out. Most people have tried to eat better and most people have stopped trying to eat better. So what have you learned uh, writing this book? What have you learned researching this in terms of getting people to, to get motivated and stay motivated, stay consistent with their workouts? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've run into the same thing myself, obviously having I think my, my email inbox now is, it must be over, I don't know, 120,000 emails probably sent and received uh, over the last six years. And so that's actually why I wrote this book because I've been asked those questions so many times. And also not just general like, oh, how do I get and stay motivated? But a lot of people have asked me, what do I do, right? Because um, on my podcast and in, in various articles, like people that have followed me for a bit have a sense for my life and my lifestyle and my routine. And um, I'm busy. I work a lot. It's not just working out. That's just like a little piece of the beginning of my day. And then mm -hmm. I have a lot of other things that I do. And so I've had a lot of people ask me, not only just from the fitness perspective, but just in life, like to stay motivated, to want to, um, whether it's build a business or advance in their career or, sure. or you do, you know, you have fitness and that in addition to having a family and how, how, how to make that work, which is something I've asked a number of people that I've known who are successful that, that at least they, they didn't get divorced. They raised a family. And I don't mm. say that as a slight on you sure, at all, sure, right? Sure. But I say, I, I consider that successful. Of and I, I, I respect that. And, and I'm not, I mean, I've gone through ups and downs in my relationship with my wife. So I'm not saying that, again, I right. don't say that as an insult at all. But when I see somebody who's done a lot in their lives and managed to stay married and managed to raise kids, I, 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 that's, that's They're busy. Rare. You take care of yourself. Like, you work out, you, right? Yeah. Like how, what are they doing? Exactly. So, so that's, that's how, that's why I, I, that's where I got the idea to write the book. I didn't know what was really how what what, to, what was going to come of it. I didn't have because it's very different than the other stuff. Uh, a lot of the other stuff I was, I have written is what you were saying, just how to stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's assuming the person's motivated. Exactly. So okay, you're motivated. Here's what you do. At least motivated enough to 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 read and and try it out. Right. 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 Now and and so what I found is you have you have some people that they're motivated by results, right? So. Um, they want to lose weight or you might have skinny guys or, or sometimes thin women that want to, you know, put on muscle and they start doing, they, and then they learn about energy balance. They learn about macronutrient balance and they learn about, you know, um, confine exercises and progressive overload, blah, blah, blah. And they go do it and they see results uh, for sometimes in the first time, uh, you know, in their lives, they see consistent results and they see that um, this is a lifestyle they can they can maintain, and that motivates them enough to keep going, right? Mm -hmm. But then you have uh, a lot of people that yeah that struggle with even getting started, um, or that get started and just tend to fall off, even though things are going in the right direction. Life gets in the way, um, or I mean, yeah, whatever. There's it, sure there are so many different reasons why people why people drop off. So that's why I thought this might be an interesting book to write, and it's something that was a bit self serving. I was kind of scratching my own itch because. Um, at this point, honestly, I think I'm a bit jaded. Like I don't read much self-help, self-development stuff anymore because I've read a lot in the past to where I got to that saturation point where I felt like I was just kind of hearing the same things over and over. Mm -hmm. And so there are occasional books here and there that seem that have a very unique angle or take, but, mm -hmm. um, general, like how to do better in life stuff doesn't interest me all that much anymore. However, I was, I was thinking, okay, I've read a lot of this stuff. I've put a lot of this stuff into use in my own life. I've worked 
virtually with a lot of people and help them in various ways. Let's do my own take on it, right? Let's, mm -hmm. let's, and let's make it a personal, like, this is the stuff that works for me. And I, I reference a fair amount of scientific research in the book. And so it's not just all anecdotal and just all my ideas, but, um, well, what kind of, what kind of, what did you find with the scientific research in terms of motivation? So, so in the book, I, I kind of broke it down in the framework of, um, so you have cultivating, that's like the first part of the book is cultivating the right mindset. Right. And then the next part is setting goals. Um, and then the next part is, is doing the work. And then the next part is staying on top. Right. So I thought that's kind of a natural progression and a way to, um, a framework that I can use to kind of fit information together, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So so in terms of mindset, one of the chapters that I personally enjoyed the most um, writing and researching, and I don't know, it just really resonated with me, is called The Great Art of Sacrifice, right? And I open with a quote from Jordan Peterson, mm -hmm. which I'm paraphrasing, um, don't sacrifice who you are for, or who you could be for who you are, mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, a cool message, right? But uh, in, in that chapter, you know, because... I think a lot of, and this is again, I've experienced this myself and in speaking with a lot of people, working with a lot of people, I do think a lot of the issues that people run into in terms of motivation comes down to necessity. Do you really, how much does it really matter to you? And what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice? How much pain are you willing to, to go through? How much effort are you willing to expend? And, you know, I tell a story uh, in that chapter about Tom Brady. And his, are you familiar with his? I actually wasn't until I wrote this. I'm not. Because no. I'm not, I'm not, I don't really follow sports. I watch some playoff sports here and there. Mm -hmm. But so Brady, uh, as, a, as a teenager, he was, he was good at baseball. That was his sport, actually. And um, he really wanted to play football, though. And his family didn't really support him. They're like, why? You, you have a, you know, you're not athletic at all. Sure, you have a good arm, but you're good at baseball. You should just do that. He didn't want to, right? So he, he decides, no, I'm going to play football. He goes on the team. He's terrible. He just sits on the bench. And this was like an 0-8 team, too. It was a crap team. And he was not even good enough to start, right? Mm. So they just sat, sat him on the bench. But uh, he was determined to, to, to become something, to, to, to get, at least get good at the sport, right? And he actually, even along the way, he, uh, he had said in a school paper that one day he's going to become, he's going to be a household name. And, his, and he had, a, he had a, a loving and supportive family, but they, they laughed at it, literally laughed at mm -hmm. him saying that. They were like, and they, you know, Tommy, he had bigger sisters too that were very good athletes. And so he was kind of living in their shadow a bit. And um, so along the way, I mean, he, he has... Uh, and out just a superhuman work ethic and uh, just superhuman discipline, right? So he applied himself um, religiously to football and he became Tom Brady. And in, uh, in, in an interview that Facebook, they did that Tom versus time series, mm -hmm. right? And, they, and there was something, this is why I even came onto this story because I saw that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So he was basically saying that, um, and he was making this point, like, what are you willing, you want to be great at something? What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to give up your life? And he, and he was saying in football, right? Anybody that, if, if you want to compete with him, you better be willing to, you better be willing to give up your entire life because that's what he has done. And I was like, oh, it's interesting. So I go and look at, you know, what's his story. And that's what he did. That's all this dude. That's all he has done. His entire mm -hmm. life is football. I mean, there are little, there's just a number of little anecdotes I share in the story where you just he's the, no normal teenagers don't do what this kid did. Like mm -hmm. that's all he would he would all he would do is at his school. Then he would do his football workouts and his football drills. Mm -hmm. No video games. Mm -hmm. No hanging out with friends. And and you know so you on the on the outside looking in, you look at somebody like Tom Brady and you're like even even if you don't necessarily aspire to be something like that, even if you don't think you necessarily could, which isn't necessarily true, but let's say you don't think that you could become the best in the world. You just want to become much better than average at something. Um, I think that a lot of people, and I've had to learn this lesson too, don't realize how much sacrifice, don't realize what it really takes to make that happen in terms of sacrifice, in terms of exertion of effort, in terms of going through pain. And I think some people uh, will look at that and that kind of discourages them like, oh, it's going to be so, so much work and it's so yeah. hard. And what I think I like, you have to get over that. I think you have to really face that, though. It's a reality. And I, and I also think that um, you're talking about sacrifice and the way I would usually present it to because I've trained a lot of kids. And I loved training kids because, especially with fitness, because uh, the, the, it's so black and white. You know, I work out to the, today. Yep. Three days from now, you know, you did two more push-ups. They could, they could measure that and see that, that something fundamentally changed with a little bit of sacrifice and a little bit of effort and, and, and time. And I would say to them, you know, you're always playing this game of present self versus future self. Yep. And, you know, 
do you want to make present self, you know, do you want to take care of present self and sacrifice future self? Or do you want to sacrifice present self for future self? And for long-term success, it's important that you understand that present self, sometimes you have to sacrifice for future self. So that means maybe not eating that donut, which will feel good right now. But if I eat it today, it's going to affect me tomorrow. So I'm going to keep that away from myself and then I'm going to benefit in the future. And this is a very important lesson I think that people need to understand. There's a term in marketing that I love, which is um, trading dimes for quarters. Mm. So in marketing, it's like, if you can spend a dime and get a quarter back uh, in return, then that's great. And I use that one for, for people when they talk about how much time it takes. Like, I don't have the time to work out. But let me ask you this, Mike. You're such a successful individual in our space. Do you find that the the hour you take, and you work out almost every day, so do yeah. you find that the hour you take out of your day to work out is an hour lost? Or do you find that is a return, like trading dimes for quarters, where you get two hours back of productivity? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to quantify exactly because also I've been doing it for so long. So if, if you if I really wanted to see what it was like to, to drop that out of my life, I mean, I haven't done, I don't, I don't know, I haven't not worked out What do you think would happen? Um, what do you I think, think would happen to your lower energy, lower energy levels, which then, because I think that, right, so you have, when we're talking productivity, you have the quantitative side, time. You only have so much time. Yes, that's true. But then we have the qualitative side, which is what you're talking about, which I 100% agree with. And a lot of that does come down, I think, to energy, right? It comes down to your uh, physical energy. It comes down to your mental energy. It comes down to your, you can, I guess you could say spiritual energy in, in, in a sense of motivation, right? So mm-hmm. even if you have a fair amount of physical energy and mental energy, you're there, you're not clouded. Mm-hmm but you have low motivation to do what you're doing. That's not, you're not going to be as productive as if you have the physical energy, the mental energy, and you're into it and you're driven and you know why you're doing it and you want to do it. So yeah, I would say on the fitness side of things, I mean, because if we just start with the biology, right, then it benefits all of those, Mm -hmm. uh, all of those aspects. And I think just the fact of feeling, having your body feel good and feel healthy and not having pain, not having physical pain, uh, That's a big one. Not having mental pain, right. which I, I think that um, I mean, fitness helps in both of in both. And then there's there's research on, of course, the physical, but also also on the on the psychological mm-hmm. side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, that it depending on, I guess it, I guess it kind of comes down to right in the psychological sense. You have a person's level of neuroticism, right? So if a person has a higher uh, neuroticism quotient, they can benefit. I think even more psychologically from exercise, uh, help stave off, you know, anxiety, depression, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I have yet to ever have a, a client who didn't tell me that they, that their productivity at work and the quality of time that they ended up having with their family didn't improve yeah. with a little bit of, of fitness and a little bit of better nutrition. I've yeah. never had anybody come to me and say, Same. oh, I'm, I'm more fit and healthier now and uh, everything else is worse. Yeah. Everybody tells me it's yeah. a lot better. Yeah. And that's what one thing I think people need to really understand because we look at what's right in front of us, which is you know, 30 minutes or 60 minutes of sweating, time, effort. That's the part that I don't have time to sacrifice. We're not realizing that that is gonna benefit everything else so much more. It makes everything else Uh, so much better. That's a very important thing. The other thing too, is I think people need to realize that, especially if you're not working out now and you're not eating right now, you don't have to do much to get things to feel a little bit better. You you don't have to do much. I mean, I don't know about you, but I exercise, um, I I do about five hours of resistance training a week and I do about an hour of cardio. So six hours a week. Yeah, total. And sometimes that's four hours depending on on schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, it's rarely less than four hours. And that's, um, and that's in a sense, I, I consider that part of my job, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just because of, because of my work and, and I need to, it's something I would do anyway. Um, but it's not that much time. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people, if they're not familiar with me and my work and, and let's say I just, I'm speaking to a random person, right. And they ask, Oh, what do you do? And I do fitness things, health and fitness things <laughs> is my standard answer. Right. Um, but they'll assume that, Oh, I must be in the gym like two hours a day, seven days a week. No, not at all. Not no, close. no, no. I think that's the kind of time that you would dedicate if you're a super high level athlete yes. or super high level bodybuilder or something yes. like that. But for the average person, uh, you don't need to do It'd that. Be at counterproductive. All. I Absolutely. would never even recommend that. No. And then here's the other the the, the other thing when it comes to um, you know with with fitness and exercise is a lot of people get so focused on. At least I found this as a trainer. A lot of people get so focused on the goal, which there's nothing wrong with that. You need to set goals to kind of see yourself progress because that helps you stay remain motivated. But uh, what you need to also realize is that if you can enjoy the process, then it's really a lot easier. Like 
Uh, many times for myself personally, I exercise for the sake of the enjoyment of exercising. Mm -hmm. And imagine that, right? So if you, you know, someone's watching this right now, imagine if you just got up and worked out because you enjoyed working out for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. A little bit of time alone, maybe cleared your headspace. It feels good. You're not worried about- it Wakes you, know, you up. I think it's a great way to start the day. That's right. I mean, there's research that shows that your morning mood, I mean, this is one of those things that like it's common sense and everyone has experienced mm -hmm. it, but there's there's research on that the, your, your, your mood in the morning kind of sets the tone for the rest of your mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, when we're talking about how it affects the body, even adding as little as, you know, two days a week of resistance training, positively, especially if it's done properly, of course, mm -hmm positively affects uh, hormone levels in, in people. And, and what we're seeing right now, uh, especially in men, is declining testosterone levels over the last three or four decades. Uh, women are experiencing this imbalance of progesterone and estrogen. And proper exercise- like onset puberty and stuff. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and proper exercise balances those, out, those things out tremendously. I just got a message uh, from uh, one of our listeners who was a total beginner. This was a uh, 20, I think he was 20, he was in his 20s, I think he was 27 years old. And he got his testosterone levels checked and they were borderline low out of range low. So he's a young kid, low testosterone. And he wrote to me and he's like, what do I do? So I gave him a little bit of advice, you know, get better sleep. Uh, here's a couple things with your diet you might want to do. And then definitely start lifting weights, like yeah. lifting weights and, and, and let's see what happens. He uh, ordered um, a at-home testosterone uh, test kit from Everlywell, great company, by the way. You could just order these tests and they'll come to your home tested his testosterone levels, and he went from, and this was over the course of three months, I believe, it's a 90 day period, his testosterone levels went from the low, almost out of range, to upper mid range wow. in that short period of time. And he, so he felt, noticed a big difference. He noticed a huge difference, yeah. and they weren't huge, huge changes. Yeah. Um, they were changes though, because you do have to change your lifestyle a little bit, but imagine now how he feels and how much better the rest of his life is. And so we talk a lot about the sacrifice of fitness, but when you really add it all up, you're sacrificing a lot more when you don't it's true. take care of yourself, you know? It, yeah, it's true. Um, it's just, again, it's more comfortable. There, you have like enjoying the process, right? A lot of people say that. It's yeah, like yeah. one of those Fitzbo quote. Yeah. Things, right? It's like <laughs> yeah. every, every caption of every yeah, cheesy yeah, yeah. Instagram post. Um, what are, <laughs> so. You must be reading my Instagram post. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in exercise, I think, I think at least it's a, it's a good little training ground for that because yeah. there are a lot of things that are just inherently enjoyable uh, about exercise, right? right? Even if it's just the chemical release of it. Right. Whereas um, there are other things like take in, in work, right? So stuff that you have to grind out, which every, no matter what you're doing, no matter how much you, no matter how much you might like what you're doing, there are going to be aspects. If you want to become even mildly successful or moderately successful, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to, you're just not going to like it. You're never going right, to like right, doing right, it. Right. And of course, that's one of the things that set um, high achievers apart from, from low achievers is the high achievers. I think one of the fundamental things is they're just willing to do a lot mm -hmm. of the shit that the low achievers are not willing to do. That's right. But for you, I'm, I'm curious, what, what, how, how do you learn to enjoy that process? Cause for me, oh. I would say, um, there is, I'm, I, I do things that, yeah, I don't enjoy and I don't think I'll ever enjoy so for me, I guess maybe it's, I, I have a strong enough why, I have, I have a strong enough Purpose. reason yeah, yeah, yeah. of why I'm doing it. That's right. But, I think for me, it's part of that. I know what the, my purpose is behind what I'm doing, um, but also I've learned to associate, and I do this with nutrition as well. I'll connect the two for you. So if you give me a second. So I've connected the, the, the grind and the challenge with the satisfaction of overcoming that challenge. So um, I've now associated it with growth. You know, mm -hmm. growth doesn't happen from being comfortable. It happens from being uncomfortable. And so now that I connected the two, I can, I've learned to enjoy the pain of the challenge. Now, nutrition is a great example. Um, you know, when I teach clients to eat healthier, many times they'll tell me, but I don't like the taste of this food. And I'll tell them, you know, there's a lot more to food than just taste. There's how it affects your skin, your health, your digestion. Let's pay attention to those things so you can make a, a decision based off of more information. Right. Just like the challenge and the grind of work, if I just focus on the fact that it sucks right now, I'm not gonna do it. But if I understand that I get personal growth from it, I start to succeed, I learn, I, you know, all these other things, now I have a better, a better sphere of information that I can make a decision based off of. And when you do that, it makes sense most of the time to eat the broccoli yeah. and it makes sense most of the time to do the hard work. So, yeah. so anyway, as usual, always awesome talking to you, Mike. Yeah. Love having you on the show. So yeah. love Thanks, it, love man. it. Thank you very much. Uh, look, subscribe to our channel. We post new videos all the time. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll make sure to visit periodically to answer those questions for you. 
and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.